Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another edition of Faith of Life. My name is Hamid Slimi and I'm your host for this show. Islam for Common Sense continues with different questions and answers. In this show today, we will deal with the, uh, the question of youth and older generations, the issue specifically of communication. It is a very common topic to be discussed and the challenges facing the parents from one side and the challenges facing the youth. How do we establish communication between the two generations? It is very common, especially in the immigrant community uh, in North America or in the West for that matter, or people going from a culture that is different to another culture, a new culture, and their children born there. So although they may be living in the same house, same family, yet they have different perceptions which were influenced over time by um, ideas, of course, which were local and part of the environment where they grew up. So we have dealt with that issue, answering some of the questions from the parents and from the youth. Uh, questions that come, especially uh, relationships, marriage, um, uh, the issue of having a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and of course, parents coming from a Muslim background, not uh, used to such thing, and these, how they are overcome, uh, and these challenges, how they are overcome, these questions, how they are tackled and answered, were part of the following questions. So let's watch this, and we will be back after then. This question is addressing uh, the youth more so. Uh, growing up in the Western society myself in high school, I was surrounded by uh, everything from people dating and uh, alcohol and drugs and things like that. Being a youth here, it's just very hard to kind of create your own circle to avoid these things, especially on the media. You also see it on the TV too, so everywhere you go you're seeing it. So how do we kind of stay away from that but still be part of the society and talk to everyone, but not really fall into the trap of the Western, well, not the Western, but <laughs> that sort of culture in itself. Okay, Imam, actually, to follow up on this question or to add to it, um, I was born outside of Canada, and my daughters were born in uh, North America, and there's always this clash of, uh, uh, maybe it's cultural, but at the same time, it's the school they're not in private Islamic school. So uh, the way or the teachings they get from the school sometimes uh, does not actually confirm or adhere to the uh, teachings that we're trying to give them. Um, how can we actually balance between them, um, let's say, for example, sleepovers or um, uh, going out, uh, going to the movies, uh, watching movies at home, um, having a cable or open satellite or things like that? Um, if you could elaborate, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I should acknowledge you, um, uh, brother, for really coming forward and, and, and uh, uh, recognizing the fact that we are faced with challenges. Uh, however, every challenge is an interesting thing to go through because not all the challenges are bad. And the fact that you mentioned as a father, you, have, uh, you were brought up in a society which is different than this, but you are a successful man, you have come to this society, and you have uh, proven that your principles, your values, your faith could work in a different society where you were raised. Now I hear um, uh, our sister here, uh, both sisters, saying that you know there are challenges, and actually, it's actually, it goes both ways. You are raising the issue of communication, and the issue of communication is so fundamental that we are neglecting it. And we all say we cannot establish respect unless we have communication. We cannot have communication unless we have consideration. What is consideration? I put myself in your shoes. You put yourself in my shoes. Now, as a father, I talk to my daughter. My daughter raises concerns. I don't see them as concerns. I see them probably irrelevant or it could be the opposite. I see them as a da dangerous challenges to, to the person who I am standing in front of her. I'm her father. How dare she speak to me like that? Now, the only way to understand is to put yourself in someone's shoes. 
Now, I like to, in this context, to, to prove my point, is when the prophet, peace be upon him, was approached by a man, and that man was from a, a, a generation. They keep talking about a generation gap, you know? And sometimes the gap turns to become a slap. And you know, we don't serve that, uh, that purpose of solving solutions. Look at the psychology is involved here. The prophet, peace be upon him, here is a man comes to him, a man full of energy, biochemically strong, a man needs a woman. So he is like coming to the prophet. He can't afford to get married. He comes and says, could you give me a license, make an exception for me, you're the prophet, to go and fornicate. There are some girls I like. They are okay. I'm going to go and fornicate with them. Would you allow me to do such thing? Now, of course, some companions were there. A reaction was, like, what are you talking about? This is the prophet. How come you're talking like this? So it was immediate reaction of, of, of anger at that person. However, the prophet, peace be upon him, he understood the psychology and recognized that this woman needs a woman. This man needs a woman, and this person is created in a way that he wants a woman. He's a natural person. He has hormones. He has chemicals. So something has to be done. Islam says, get married. Now, of course, the culture has made marriage difficult. Unfortunately, that's another issue about, uh, uh, that we have raised earlier, the culture. In the name of culture, we are banning things. And Islam has made marriage very simple. But this man comes in, and the prophet, peace be upon him, says, you would like to fornicate? He said, yes. I would like to have relationships, sexual relationships outside marriage. And he said, okay. Now he's going to use something called common sense, which we spoke about earlier. He said, would you accept somebody to fornicate with your sister? He said, no, I wouldn't accept that. Especially in that society, honor issue and all this. He said, okay, would you accept somebody to do it with your daughter? He said, no, I would never accept it. Would you accept it, somebody to do it with your mother? He said, no. Would you accept it with your aunt? No. He said, if you don't accept it to be done to your own folks, your mother, your sister, your daughter, your relatives, how would you accept it for somebody else? Not only he's using common sense, he's using the cardinal belief of the, Muslim with, uh, of the Muslims, which is none of you believes until you love for others what you love for yourself. Meaning, you're going to lose the most important thing as we started the show today. Faith. 